So, so welcome, <laughs> welcome to Fort Ross. And, uh, have you been here before? Uh, yes, many years ago. Yeah. Well, welcome back, and it's really quite a place here, and um, I'm glad you could make it. And you know, uh, did you have a chance to go through the visitor center and um, the, see the film yet? I plan to. Okay. Yeah. How long? How long is that film? Oh, it's not long, about 15 minutes. But uh, what I'd like to say is that there are many different stories to this place. Um, it's not just the Russian story. Yes, this place is known for. Uh, the, the name, yes, Fort Ross. Ross comes from Russia, the Russian word for Russia. However, um, actually, there are uh, many more stories. The Russians were here just from 1812 to 1842, so that's 30 years. Whereas, how about our native people here, right? They've been here for 17,000 years, right? Uh, and, uh, well, 17,000 versus 30 years, right? So they have a much longer story. And I'll share their story before we uh, go down, into, down to the fort and and also, uh, well, always the biggest story is the natural history story. Here, the San Andreas Fault comes on shore just uh, south of us, and goes up through the hills. And if you'd like, after visiting the park, you could uh, cross the highway, go up the hill, and uh, up at the historic orchard there. And in the Redwood Grove, uh, there are some sag ponds. And that's right where the fault goes through. And uh, during the earthquake of 06, it was about a six foot. Uh, uh, a 10 foot uh, shift there. Really? So it's, it's Have you felt earthquakes in recent years here? Uh, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Like there was just one the other right. day. It wasn't the San right. Andreas, though. It was no, right. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, that geological story is always very humbling, right? And uh, yeah. some of these rocks off our coast here once were down near LA somewhere. So they've slowly made their way up here. And anyway, the natural history is always the biggest story, yes, uh, of this place. And this redwoods up there and the sea lions off the coast have their t story to tell as well. And in terms of the human history, besides the Kashaya Pomo story and the Russian story, also after the Russians left, um, there were different uh, ranchers that moved in here in what we call the ranch era or the early California era. And um, that was 150 years long, so much longer than those 30 years the Russians were here. And I'll point out later one of the ranch houses that still left. And also, this has been a state park uh, for over 100 years. This is one of the first California state parks and founded in uh, 1909. So. Uh, that's a whole other story, and even know. our organization, Fort Ross Conservancy, has been in, um, in existence for over 40 years. So, uh, They had the port of Kronstadt near St. Petersburg. It would have taken them a whole year to get here, and you thought your journey was difficult today, right? But imagine <laughs> being in a ship this size you know, for a whole year, and that, that ocean out there is powerful, and uh, it was very generous, but also takes, too, and there were many shipwrecks. And, uh, then when they got to the Pacific, they found the sea otter, and that became the new fur of choice and of, of fashion. And so, um, and then they were, came across uh, the Aleutian Islands, and then uh, to Kodiak Island in southeast Alaska, and then down the shore. They were first down here around 1803, and, uh, and then first time sailed into San Francisco Bay in 1806. And then uh, they created a port just south of us at what we call Bodega Bay now. They called Port Rumiantsev. And 1809, and then here at 1812, 1812, 1812 to 1842, is the first year. right? And um, you know, we say they, and we're referring to the Russians, but actually, often there were many more Alaskans with them than there were uh, Russians, and they were the hunters, and they were all here for for the fur and for uh, trading and for food. And uh, we'll be going into the magazine or the fur warehouse and looking at the different trade goods and learn more about that then. But uh, these trees in this area, this is, uh, these are Monterey cypress trees the, during the Mexican era and then early Californians built up and, uh, and then they planted these trees to, as a windbreak to help protect the village. This is the center for the north coast here. And you know, we've uh, read documents of some of the Russian journals and the Russians wrote that the natives sometimes would approach them and ask for uh, the Russian American company flag because it served the natives as uh, protection uh, from the Spanish. Because we've learned that it was easier here for them than it was with the Spanish of the missions. Here they were more free to come and go and carry on their traditions. And um, the Russians actually had a treaty here with them. They say it was the only treaty between a European power and the native Californians where the Europeans kept their word. Of course they they left, so maybe it helped them keep the word, but we'll give them a little credit for that. And also, uh, they had the first uh, vaccines here against uh, smallpox, because 
as we know, uh, disease had a huge impact on Native Americans throughout, including Native Californians. And it's estimated that about 80% of Native people died. That's what's unique about this coast here. Many people don't realize this was the boundary between the Spanish and the Russian empires here along our coast. But I mentioned that, you know, luckily they're still here now, and, uh, you know, many Native peoples have disappeared due to that impact. Um, and uh, the Kashaya, they were only left with 40 acres for their reservation, but the last couple of years it's actually expanded. It's now over a thousand acres. So I was just adding a, a story. Uh, I've had the opportunity here to travel with some of our natives uh, to Russia uh, because uh, when the Russians were here, yeah, their eyes were wide open. They were learning about this new world and these different species of animals and plants and making drawings, making collections, and also learning about the native people and making collections. They were trading with them and it turns out the biggest collection in the world of, uh, of Northern California native well, baskets and clothing and weapons and you know, artifacts, we would call them, from that time, from the early 19th century, is the biggest collection in the world is in St. Petersburg. I'm curious about this collection. Um, you know, I've learned since that, for example, when a basket maker dies, uh, they break the baskets or burn them to release the spirit, to travel with her to the next world. Whereas these items, you know, were all still intact. So it's a unique sort of um, uh, time machine and vessel of uh, time capsule, right, of good things from that time. And so they wanted to see these items. And when we went there with them, I was serving as their translator. And uh, it's really something else. They took it all very seriously. Before they approached, they said special prayers. And then when they were there with these items, some of the items they were afraid to touch because they weren't quite sure of the origin or the use of them. Other items they were holding, and some of them were in tears, because it was like a direct, direct connection with their ancestors. And, and anyway, during our festivals here, we have descendants of the native Californians and native um, well, Alaskans and Russians. You sort of sneak up on here at the high hills behind as protection and a big vista of the ocean. And, um, and here they had trees to build a fort with. At Bodega Bay or Port Rubiansa, there weren't the, the trees there. And, uh, also had good fresh water here, the stream on each side of the fort, and they, first they dug water for, for a well, and, the, and then they built the fort around uh, the well, where they found there was good fresh water, just a 30-foot well, and even during the drought, there was good fresh water here. And here's a nice uh, painting from that time in 1841. You can see uh, the view of the fort. This is the view from up above, and here's uh, the fort, and then I was telling you about the village, yes, that was over here. So that's, this is the village depicted. And here, this is actually a uh, wooden architecture museum uh, in, in uh, Siberia, near Irkutsk, uh, uh, Tautsi. And, but just, uh, it was depicted here to give us an idea of what the village looked like over here on this side of the fort. Other houses on the other side of the fort. And just a reminder, it was a colony, a settlement, not just a fort. Actually, it's even named not quite right. It's not fort, it's fortress, uh, Krepist in Russian. So it's really a she, not a he. So anyway, uh, so welcome to the fort. When the Russians first came here, you know, they weren't sure how they'd be received by the native people here or by the Spanish, because they both, you know, considered this their territory. So as they had done elsewhere, they first of all built the high walls uh, and have the blockhouses. Uh, you'll see some cannon. There were more cannon in the blockhouses. There were up to 40 cannon here. Luckily, uh, there never was a battle here. The Russians and Spanish need each other more than they need to fight each other. Besides the buildings that you see here, they also uh, had three other buildings on this side. They had, a uh, like this building behind us, another warehouse over here, and like that building, another barracks over there, and plus a little summer kitchen. This is actually the one original building left here from that time. Uh, the roof is new, the doors and windows, but the main structure is original. It's 70% original. It's uh, thought to be the oldest standing wooden building along the coast between Sitka and Monterey.
some pine marten and elk and ermine and fox and coyote. Over there are some more sheepskin and there's a bear skin over by the wall there. Um, making this was like a prayer to give you more power during the hunt, to come mm -hmm. back alive and with more prey. Mm -hmm. And also if you lost your paddle while you're out hunting, you could use this as a paddle. Yeah. Huh. Uh -oh. yeah. And also, uh, when you put it on, uh, here we go. Yeah, you get a photo of this uh, one. Yeah, there's okay. more to come here. <laughs> also, it helped direct the sound of your prey. Yes, yeah, so you could hear it better. Uh, and uh, protect uh, your... Yeah, and from the distance, maybe the otters looked at her and thought she was a seabird on a log. Instead of the... <laughs> there you go. She's got a good motion here, too. Instead of the hunter in, in her kayak. And, uh, and then she'd have... Uh, well, actually, some families, they didn't have a boy, they'd assign one of the girls to be the boy and to be the hunter. So with a point on the end, and you throw it like this, yeah? Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and compare this to the Russian uh, with their muskets. Uh, if you had a musket, first of all, you need to keep the powder dry, but then also, once you fire that once, those otters yeah. are out of there. Yeah. yeah. This was uh, silent. And the Russians had great skills. For the full photo opportunity, here, hold this with one hand. And then, okay. the, then over here, thanks to your hunt, here you go, there's more to come. Uh, you're holding on to this, there we go. <laughs> here, the sea otter pelts here, there we go. Okay, so now we've made it to one of the blockhouses. There are two blockhouses or towers here. Uh, and you'll, besides the cannons that are outside, uh, in front of the, the commander's house and chapel, there were also cannons uh, inside the, the two blockhouses here. And, uh, there were up to 40 cannons here. Uh, there's more cannons than the Spanish had at their presidio or um, their, their uh, fort <laughs> down in San Francisco at the time. So between these two uh, blockhouses at each corner, they could look up and down the four walls. <laughs> and we have someone else who's helping with the defense here. <laughs> we have a frog here. <laughs> so here you can see this, uh, these are uh, replica British and um, American cannons, and upstairs more cannons, including one replica uh, Russian cannon. Sending out prefab log houses for export. Uh, made of redwood. Export. Well, also in California, Hawaii, Alaska. Anyway, 
can imagine all that activity here. And also out on this bluff here. Uh, during the night watch to patrol the fort. And originally there was also a, a flag up on top of this tower. It was used for signaling the ships. The ships were coming and going. Came Highway 1, yes, the path that it was worn to the fort became a road and and then after the Russians left the walls were falling down and they just put the road right through the middle of the fort here and then eventually became Highway 1. So and, and come back to Fort Ross during the festivals and all, the biggest event is the last Saturday in July, the Fort Ross Festival, but I've mentioned also the other events, uh, often we have a, a Alaska Native Day and uh, Kashaya their uh, Batini Day and Harvest Festival in the fall and early mid October and uh, every season we have a Spring Festival and Winter Festival and lots going on in our educational programs and other special events. So um, we have a good website forross.org. You can find a lot of information there and we have tours. Yes, available. Uh, Please make a reservation in advance, and uh, I've talked about our, all of our educational programs, the kids here, so, and this belongs to all of us as a California State Park, so we encourage you to come and enjoy and, and help us take care of this place and uh, serve as a volunteer or become a member of Fort Ross Conservancy or uh, welcome your donations, of course, and uh, so help us take care of this place and preserve it for the next generations to come.